Thank you so much, Vidya. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, both of us represent very, very uh, indulgent brand. So I work for Jubilant Food Works as uh, Chief Analytics Officer. Those of you who know, uh, we, we are Domino's uh, and we enjoy now I'm part of AB Indo. We are the world's largest brewer. So it's, we are very complimentary. People love eating this after the year. So it's, it's a really combo. So cool products we thought will keep this session also very, very cool. Today we'll talk about how JNI is reshaping retail and CPG industry. You will know most of the stats, but we'll try and bring in a few nuggets that we have faced ourselves trying to uh, implement this in our uh, respective world. So uh, you, you may have heard this before. Uh, JNI is likely to add about 2.6 to 4.5 trillion dollars worth of value uh, across industries. Let's put this in perspective. India today, the fifth largest economy has a GDP of 3.9 trillion dollars. So we're talking about creating another India, equivalent of it really. Uh, the midpoint timeline to achieve that number is 2045. So while there's a lot of excitement from boardroom to crunches to school buses, I think uh, the time to achieve value is going to take some time to, to get there. Talking about our, our industries really, today retail and CPG revenues and market size across the world is about 30 trillion trillion uh, dollar uh, annually. Chennai could offer a potential of about 450 to 660 billion dollars annually, which is about 2-3% to, to growth over and above what industry is currently going at a 5% uh, growth. Where are these use cases? There are four large areas which contribute to 75% of these use cases. Uh, sales and marketing operations, customer operations, uh, software and R&D. We'll pick a few cases, talk about how our experience has been and what we are doing about it. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is uh, marketing and content generation. How many of you have seen Cadbury ad last year where you could actually create a personalized uh, message for your loved ones? Yeah? Uh, brilliant. So I think uh, this is one area which is going to transform uh, how we do the work. This is less about taking away people's job, more about what the jobs are. A lot of the work around copy and you know content will go away really. A lot of the focus will come on creating a correct brief, which is essential for creating a right media in general. Right? Um, how many of you have heard the uh, global prompt engineering competition? It happened in Dubai. Six minutes was taken to create a weather app, start to end. Right now, uh, when you go and talk about creating an app for the business really, I mean, are in two years. Where is the difference really coming from? The difference comes from we can create an app for sure really. What it takes then to link it back to or integrate with the legacy infrastructure. I give an example. So we we've created a chatbot for ordering as well as order resolution. Fairly quick work, right? I think mean, people are very, very good. Data science is becoming more of, you know, uh, programming these days. Uh, but when it comes to integrating across every model, you have to make sure it can talk to every system internally. And that's a lot of hard work. How many of you have Alexa at home? Most of you, right? How many of you ordered anything on Alexa? Right? So when the conversational commerce is fascinating, then I can do that really. The consumer level is not there. So what our relation was that when we can build a conversational app, the real use case is going to happen primarily on concern resolution, which means I should be able to let my app talk to my oven, to the person at the boss counter, to the delivery rider. Really, and that's where the real benefit will really, uh, really come from. Um, I ran over to Vijay for covering uh, some of the other use cases that he's currently working on. But I think, uh, uh, to summarize really, I think there's a lot of potential, but that's at least 10 to 20 years away. It's a long journey to realize that potential. Uh, my experience has been that we will be able to solve some real customer problems uh, here and now. Uh, what it require will require essentially is a upgrading of my legacy technology, 
being able to integrate all of this with every touch point fundamentally how we think about our model is going to be different uh, while ai can create content and image really creating a real video you want is still far away a uh, lot of the work will shift to thinking and actually executing the work and those are the some of the impact that uh, actually we see which are over to you thanks rahul hello everybody hopefully we are stopping you from your lunch so uh, I will give you a very quick shot. So sitting there, I was thinking of the practical use of Gen AI. I have no idea whether I will duplicate a lot of topics in Java. Speakers are already talking. So any startup enthusiast here, one idea for you is like let's have a solution that tells us how you got a talk a topic which is already talked already, right? Which, <laughs> which will stop you from getting bored, right? That that could be practical use of Gen AI for sure, right? That will help us. <coughs> of course. Me and Vidya. Sure. ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ Good that we have Bhaskar also here, which I can he can also support me if required. So let me only talk about three use cases that we are doing. Right, first and foremost, we not just us, right? All companies need to know what their competitors are doing. Right? In the past, how we used to do it, right? We had data from IRI Nielsen. We will create competitive solutions which tells what the companies are doing, what is their pricing strategy, what is their discount strategy, you name it, right? Basically, I'm trying to map what my competitor is doing. And and I should know how to play ahead of their strategy, right? The best use of Gene for me is the fact that it can talk to multiple n number of third-party datasets, which we would have never acquired in the past. So in the past, we could literally go and buy three or four datasets, probably like an IRI Nielsen, an IHS Kanda, or you name it, right? That's it. You should suspect again. But today with Gene, we have an opportunity to build something called a computer intelligence platform, right? and what it does is it literally goes and finds strategies of our, our competitors right for every every move that they make right every marketing point they make every pricing strategy they do right every brand strategy they do there's an engine that we're building with the help of fractal fractal is leading that for us uh, in abi uh, that can actually go and understand right what's happening with all the other companies right and we believe that the power of that engine would be at least 20 times bigger than what we were currently using so one great use case on how to do it and how to create internet for a company right another example would be again pretty much in the same space of using a lot of third party data right publicly available data put it that way we are a real business uh we do a lot of campaigns we spend 2 billion dollars on marketing one of the biggest marketing spends in And the entire plan. Uh, what happens with marketing is that in today's world, it's very sensitive and things could go very wrong, right? Not everything would be appealing to everybody. Recently, there was a, I think it was Google or right, Apple, right, Apple app that went completely wrong. So two things, right? One, how will you know what the consumers love, seeing as an as an ad, right, or content? Second thing is, even if you made a mistake. how can you how can you negate it without wasting too much of time right and that's called the art of social listening right so what we are building again is a social listening platform that looks at all possible data sets you name it your ex your twitter ex twitter facebook insta youtube you name it right every possible data set available on planet earth to understand every campaign that we are doing in marketing how the people are perceiving it they are liking it are there any backlashes if any we know how to take it off there right without uh, continuing the mistake so this for us i believe that would be a quite a big uh, innovation because a lot of companies recently have burned their hands with the uh, marketing right so we don't want to get to the same place we want to be uh, safeguarded with the technology that helps us understand two things what customers want to see in their marketing uh, strategies and if you get it wrong how can you Know it the day it aired, right? Not like after a week after media making sort of noise, right? That's another example. The third and final I'll touch is procurement. We spend around forty billion dollars on procurement. That's our total outgoing, right? Forty billion. 
And the uh, traditional way of doing procurement, as you know, it's all with the buyers, right? Buyers do all the procurement in any company, right? What we are looking at is something called autonomous sourcing. Autonomous sourcing is pretty much like an agent. Of, obviously, we're not, not taking out the entire knowledge of the buyers, and that's what I'm saying. More like an assisted uh, buying. But basically, an autonomous sourcing agent, what it does is, it again, right? It again finds patterns in the market, right? Identifies new suppliers in the market. Supply financials, for example, supply selection, for example, negotiations, for example, right? Our tail end spend itself is like 4 billion. And that 4 billion is not even negotiated, right? Today, what we can do is we can create a virtual agent that can negotiate with vendors across the globe and get a product at the price, at the price point that we love, right? Or we want. So basically, in like two years' time, we definitely believe that pretty much the way we do procurement in our company has to completely change from a completely human centric procurement. To completely an autonomous source of uh, procurement with Genie, right? So three just use cases just to give a, an idea of what we are trying to do different in this space of uh, of uh, of uh, you know uh, Genie within our space. Otherwise, it's the same story, you know, automation using commercial AI. Right? Brilliant. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 We'll, we'll open the floor. Yeah. Sam has any question? Definitely love to you the questions. <laughs> yeah, we owe pizza and beer to you. So, message well taken. Um, we will open the floor for a few questions. So, if folks want to ask one to two questions, we have a gentleman here. And one more, please. Uh, hey, I have one question to both of you actually. So, pizza and beer. Have you ever tried Gene to invent a new flavor? Of beer, a new flavor of pizza. Have you ever done that? We have, not pizza and beer, but, <laughs> but there's already a traditional AI solution that looks at identifying taste buds, right? Not taste buds, but identifying the taste that people would love. So there's a, there's a project that's ongoing which kind of tells us what should be the new flavors that we should test. That doesn't require a genetic, to be honest, it's more of an AI solution, but for sure we have it. More on the innovation side, right? I just one more question. So you were uh, mentioning that though Gen AI can be in the forefront, trying it back to legacy systems has been a challenge, right? So how about modernizing and where do you see Gen AI scope in modernizing uh, legacy systems? Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's a modernizing legacy uh, tech stack is a is a ongoing uh, journey for us really. Um, not sure if Gen AI will play a lot of role there. Uh, maybe in some part of the governance in uh, monetary really beyond that, uh, not sure, or at least not, not, nothing that's coming to my mind really. Uh, the challenge is less technical, it's more uh, more uh, priority. There's always thousand things to be done uh, like yesterday really. So where does this six talking feature is also one of the question. Um, on the previous one, I think the um, uh, whole innovation I think the, the role that Genia can play is to uh, help identify the trends. Uh, in, in, the, in the world of uh, food, actually, uh, the problem is of choice. Number of trends you see uh, could be in uh, hundreds of thousands, really. Which one to go after, which one to back, essentially, is one area. That's partly Genia, partly traditional uh, modeling. But that's why I think, you know, at least that getting the information and the content part of it can uh, uh, roll that uh, Genia can for sure play. One of the biggest uh, trends that we're seeing is in the F and B data providers. You know, earlier we only knew about it, Ayala and Nielsen and a few others, but there are like ten or twenty big F and B data providers who can actually get data from every pork, pork is pork, pork point of consumption, right? So that itself is becoming a big business, right? How to collect data from the sources and then sell it, right? And you can put in a request a buttermilk flavor beer. <laughs> <laughs> what is a buttermilk flavored beer would be buttermilk flavored beer. <laughs> I mean, for sure, India. <laughs> 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 but I thought, but I thought, I think it will be counterintuitive because I thought people drink buttermilk. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I think the, 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 the permanently high is the thing that he's expecting while keeping his gut safe. So, uh, one more question and then we. Yeah, this question to you, Joe. Uh, great session, by the way. Uh, the question is on the uh, uh, competitive intelligent platform use case that you talked about. Uh, like, if multiple competitors start using the same platform, um, where, 
how does it end? What is your ideal vision or the end state vision of uh, There is one person who is more qualified than me to talk about it. We want to contextualize it to the context of the company that we are building it for. And the context will change and will differ from the uh, Therefore, the edge of competition will always remain with the company that we are building it for. And it's saying, thanks, Arp. So we need to do that out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, both of you. A big round of applause. Very really engaging. Thank you so much.